In previous videos, we've discussed weight and balance calculations, estimating takeoff and landing distance, and climb performance. Before we jump into how to complete cross-country performance planning and fill out the navigation log, we should take a quick look at how to pick a power setting, then calculate true airspeed and fuel burn during the cruise portion of our cross-country. Let's get to it! The first thing we'll need to do is decide what's most important to us. Are we interested in getting to the destination the quickest, or in using the least amount of fuel? We'll use this information to determine what power setting to use. The Archer provides us three sets of performance data, 55%, 65%, and 75%. So we have best economy, middle of the road, and fastest cruise. In this example, we'll use 75% power because we want to get down to Mason City quickly to have the most time to explore Clear Lake and the Buddy Holly historical sites. Having made this choice, we now know that our estimated fuel burn at cruise will be 11 gallons per hour. However, without knowing our true airspeed, we won't be able to calculate the time en route and therefore our total fuel used. To estimate true airspeed, we'll need our chosen altitude of 4,500 feet, the altimeter setting, and the current temperature. Today's METAR notes that the altimeter reading is 30.17 and the temperature is 24 degrees Celsius. We'll start by calculating pressure altitude. Using the process described in the video linked above, I calculated our pressure altitude to be 4,250 feet. Let's round pessimistically to 4,000. In this case, the lower altitude is pessimistic because it has the same fuel burn but a lower true airspeed range. <laughs> now refer to the chart. The chart requires us to estimate the temperature at altitude to determine the RPM settings used to get 75% power. To do that, we'll start with the ground temperature and use the standard lapse rate to estimate the temperature at 4,000 feet. First, estimate the cruise height above ground. To do that, we'll subtract the average ground elevation from our pressure altitude. If you recall from our last video, the average elevation was 1,236 feet. Subtracting 1,236 from 4,000 leaves 2,764. If you recall, standard lapse rate is a decrease of 2 degrees Celsius for every 1,000 feet of altitude. Therefore, we'll divide the height above the ground by 1,000 and multiply the result by negative 2. In this case, 2,764 divided by 1,000 is 2.764. Multiplying that by negative 2 gives us a temperature difference of negative 5.528 degrees Celsius. Adding that to 24 degrees Celsius leaves us with an estimated temperature of 18 degrees Celsius, rounded pessimistically, at 4,000 feet pressure altitude. Now, referencing the chart and using the temperature nearest to 18, in this case 17 degrees Celsius, shows that we should be able to obtain 75% power at 2,595 RPM. And at that RPM, we should be able to obtain between 123 and 128 knots true airspeed. Just for fun, let's use interpolation to get a very specific airspeed. Start by subtracting the top and bottom numbers in the temperature column. So, 37 minus a negative 8 equals 45. Then subtract our target value of 17 from 37. This equals 20. Now divide 20 by 45 to get our multiplier, or 0 0.44444444. Next, on the airspeed side, subtract the top and bottom numbers just like we did for temperatures. So 128 minus 123 equals 5. Multiplying 5 times our multiplier of 0 0.44444444 gives us 2.22222222. <laughs> to finish up, we need to subtract that from 128 knots. So 128 minus 2.22222222 is 125.777778 knots. <laughs> and that's a mouthful. <laughs> Whew! After all that work, we now know that there's a little under three knots between the interpolated airspeed and the lowest airspeed. Therefore, for estimation purposes, 123 knots, the pessimistic number, will probably do just fine. Oh, hint, this will likely be true in most cases. So there you have it. We now know our power setting, our fuel burn rate, and a true airspeed that can be used to finish up our flight planning. Oh, we'll be doing that in the next video. Wait, before you go, I have a question for you. 
Do you prefer to fly faster and get to your destination sooner, or fly slower and burn less fuel per hour? And why do you prefer that? Please let me know in the comments below. Please share this video with two friends who might be struggling with cross-country planning. And as always, thank you for watching, fly safely, and I'll see you next time.